Are you like Wes? He's wondering why his Google business profile just isn't showing up in the map pack, even though he feels like he's doing everything right. He's picked the right business category, he's filled everything out in his listing, he's even got lots of five-star reviews. And to make things worse, showing up in local search was his plan to market his business, and it's currently generating him exactly zero dollars. So when Wes is doing everything right, why is his business still not on the map? Well, just like in real estate, your ability to rank usually comes down to three things. Location, location, location. And normally that's repeated three times purely for emphasis, but this video is all about the three location-based scenarios where you may run into trouble and the one really effective thing you can actually do about it. The way that Google treats your location is pretty strict and you can't just tell them that you wanna be found at the top of map searches in whatever service area you specify. Instead, you're presented with three choices when you create your Google business profile. The first is online retail, which really isn't for local businesses, so we're gonna skip that one. Then you're left with local store or service business. So either way, you're gonna to need to put in your physical address for verification, but if you were to choose a local store, your address is set, simple. But if you choose a service business, they let you choose your entire service area. In other words, what are all the physical areas where you can work with clients? And this trips a lot of people up. Take Tim here. He's a plumber and he sets this to his tri-county area because that's where he's willing to travel to. And Jill, she's a graphic designer who works remotely with clients all across the US, so she specifies that. Does that mean that Tim's gonna show up two counties over for plumber searches and Jill is gonna show up number one in Vermont and in California when someone searches for a designer? I don't think so, Tim. <laughs> The thing is, the service area you specify is only there to show your potential clients that you'd be willing to work with them there. It has absolutely nothing to do with your ability to rank. So what are the three location factors that you need to keep in mind when planning your local search strategy? The first is simple, city borders. Let's say you own a cleaning company and your physical address is in Valmont, Colorado. You're right next to Boulder, which is a bigger city, and you wanna show up for people searching for cleaning service Boulder. The problem you're running into here is that you aren't physically inside the boundaries of the city that you wanna rank for, Boulder, Colorado. Unless you don't have any competition who is in the city you're trying to go for, you're very unlikely to crack your way into the map. And if you're at all unsure if you're inside the boundaries that Google defines for the city you want to rank in, just go right to the source and Google the town in question. So you'll see a very definitive red border around the city. And if you fall even one block outside of it, it's just about impossible to rank in searches that contain the city name in them. Just take a look at the map results when I do this myself. So notice how every business that shows up is within the borders of Boulder proper. So is there anything you can do to fix this? Well, the obvious answer is just to move into the city that you wanna rank in, right? But if you're a brick and mortar location that people are meant to come into, this is a harder thing to think about, but still might be worth planning on in the future. But if you're the kind of business that doesn't receive visitors and you travel out, or even better yet, just work remotely, you've got a much easier and far more affordable option. Google actually allows you to use a virtual office or a co-working space as your physical address, as long as it abides by one simple rule. And this is directly from Google. Service area businesses can't list a virtual office unless that office is staffed during business hours. So as long as you're working out of that co-working space or virtual office, you're playing by Google's rules. Now, how often they'll check on you actually being there, if ever, I have no idea. So all I'll say is you should follow that rule if you wanna keep your listing up. And I know you're probably wondering how much this would end up costing. So what I found is that the US average for what you'd pay runs anywhere from 50 bucks to 350 per month to get yourself a basic membership at a co-working space, which is good enough to satisfy Google's rule. But before you start looking up virtual office spaces, this next scenario might actually help you in pinpointing specifically where you should try to get one. So let's say you're physically located inside the city that you wanna be ranking for. So why are your competitors with fewer reviews still outranking you in the map? Well, it might have something to do with our next location factor, the city center. 
This mostly comes into play when people are looking for a type of business inside one city, but they're searching from somewhere else. Think about when you're planning a vacation to Chicago, right? You might be searching for the best deep dish pizza the week before. It's Lou's, by the way. Or if people live in smaller towns outside a more major city, they might search the larger city just to get more results. For instance, if you were to live in McHenry, California, and you're looking for an accountant that's reasonably close by, you might actually look in the neighboring city and do a search for accountant Modesto. And the results are pretty closely clustered here because they're all located in what Google considers to be the center of that town. And when I say center, it's not always literally in the geographic center. It's usually just the area that's the busiest, most populated. It's almost always where the you know downtown area of a city is. And you can check where yours is simply by Googling the name of your town, looking at it on the map, and wherever Google puts the name of the town is where they consider to be the city center. And you may need to play around with the zoom for it to show up. And there are lots of other factors that come into play on which businesses are going to show up in what order, but generally speaking, the closer you are to the center, the higher the chance you'll have to rank for these types of searches. So if you were looking into a virtual office or co-working space, this center point might be the area that you'd want to focus on first. Now let's talk about location factor number three, searcher to business distance. So let's say your potential customer is doing a search for your type of business but they don't specify a city name in their search. They just type in something like sushi near me or even just interior designer. Google's mostly just gonna prioritize the business whose address is physically the closest to that searcher. And the bummer of that is they do this whether it's a physical location like our sushi restaurant example or one where they never need to go there at all like our interior designer. You know, why would I need my interior designer who's coming to meet me in my house to be the closest one to me physically? I don't, but Google is still doing it that way. And again, there are other factors at play. It's not always just gonna show me the three that are the closest, but proximity does factor in very heavily. Unfortunately, there's not a whole lot you can do about that. It's not like you can just keep moving your address close to every single searcher. But generally speaking, if you were to go with that co-working space in the city center where you wanna rank, you'll probably statistically be closer to more searches simply because you're in a more populated area. But before you go looking for a new location to do business out of in hopes of ranking higher, I wanna make sure you've already maxed out all the other easier ranking factors that are more in your control. So I made this video where I sat down with the guy who writes the yearly report of local SEO ranking factors so you'll know what they are and how important each one is. So click right here and see how well you're doing in each of them. See you over there in a second.